Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Downing. And today I just wanted to showcase my 10th anniversary wedding present from my wife, an original Prusa Mini. Now I know what you're thinking. How did he get so lucky? Well, the truth is, even the blind squirrel finds a nut sometimes. Probably gonna regret saying that. So just shy of two and a half months, the printer finally arrived. And the plan is to do a quick unboxing and then jump into a somewhat abridged assembly process. So the first thing you're going to see right out of the box is a package of mini gummies, which ended up disappearing very quickly. Damn kids. Now there are actually steps for these in the manual, so if you want to follow along word for word, don't eat them. Next out of the box was the Prusa Cheat Sheet. This is basically just a scale drawing of all the hardware for pretty much all their printers across the board. So don't go looking for all these pieces in the box. Though this is a good resource, I never ended up using it. Next is the first optional upgrade, the filament sensor, that was included in my kit because my wife is a high roller. Canada. And up next, a not overly exciting power cable. It's just a basic jumper from the wall to the power supply. And because I'm in the US, the kit ships with a standard three prong version. And out of the box next, we've got the filament spool holder. Really do like this design, and I've actually built a couple others for my other printers. Next, we're graced with a couple of samples of PLA filament. Personally, I'm a big fan of the Galaxy Black. Next is what I found to be an extremely useful resource, both for how to operate the printer and also put it together. And we'll be consulting the online version in the next part of the video. Next, we get into my second and favorite upgrade, the textured and spring steel sheets for the print bed. This was actually my first time with a textured sheet, and for the most part, I have nothing but good things to say about it. Sorry for the bit of continuity confusion here, but since we're not going to be assembling the spool holder or really going through the spare parts bag, I wanted to spend a little bit more time on the sheets. That said, these two sheets offer a wide variety of material options for printing down the road, and I look forward to putting them to good use. And the last thing before we move deeper is the USB key. This comes preloaded with the most recent firmware and has all your sample test prints. Now before we take this next section of cardboard out, what we're going to want to do is flip open this flap and then remove the LCD screen from the box. This is probably one of my favorite upgrades over the MK2S and the MK3 series and is a feature I hope they make standard for all their other printers going forward. It's recommended that you keep all this packaging and the original box, just in case you end up having to ship the printer later. And once the LCD has been removed, we can then remove this piece of cardboard and reveal the print deck and the extruder assemblies. I do have to give credit for how well this packaging was designed. Everything was packaged very tightly with relatively little material. So tight, in fact, that it enticed a couple of F-bombs out of me while trying to remove the power supply. The jury's still out how I feel about this being external as well, but I understand why they did it. Now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of the printer, and a majority of the assembly is just attaching these two components together. The first part we're going to dig into is the Y-axis assembly. This is the base of the whole unit, and I gotta say is extremely well put together. As a less expensive alternative to the MK3S, it does seem to hold its own against it albeit its smaller print volume. But the biggest benefit over the MK3S kits is that this assembly comes pre-assembled for you. So if you start it out with a Mini, and think you can handle a MK3S assembly because of it, you've got a rude awakening coming. And I only say this because aside from just a few connections to the electronics box, this whole assembly is literally just three screws. Sorry, correction. Three screws for the axis assemblies, one screw for the LCD. So aside from taking an already ready-made 3D printer right out of the box and putting it on your bench, this is probably the easiest assembly that I've ever had to do. Not to say this didn't have its moments of frustration. That's always going to be a given. But in comparison to other builds, this one was quite easy. So for the second part of this video, we'll be diving into this... Diving into this... Diving into this... Diving into this... Diving into this assembly process. We'll be following the online guide and starting out at step 5. Because if you couldn't get through steps 1 through 4 on your own, eh, 
and steps 5 and 6 really aren't much of a brain teaser either. In step 9 we're basically just trying to get access to the electronics box. There are two pieces held together by a single screw, and removing them is a pretty simple process. Now in the interest of keeping this video slimmer than me, what are you saying? I'll be hitting the fast forward button on a lot of these screw turns. And that said, once this screw is loose, these two covers should pop right off. Once we have access to the electronics box, the first thing we need to do is hook up the LCD screen. This is done by putting the cable through the side of the box and connecting it to the only freaking place there is to plug it in. You'd have to try real hard to screw this one up. It's even notched for your pleasure. Earning that ticket to hell. Once we have the cable plugged into the box, what we want to do then is unplug the LCD screen and then wrap and tuck as the manual shows. Steps 12, 13, and 14 involve putting the two assemblies together in a seemingly simple three-screw configuration. So do you remember that little bit of frustration I was talking about? This is where it all begins, with step number 13. But hell, it's only three screws, right? How hard could it be? Yeah, I've had better luck playing darts in the dark. This whole part of the assembly is completely blind. You're just really going by feel to find the T-nut inside the extruded channel. And the term poke and hope took on a whole new meaning. Honestly, I'm not sure what I was more frustrated with. The fact it was taking five minutes to land two screws, or the fact that in five minutes two screws were making me look like a complete idiot. Neither of those should have taken that long. <sighs> I just can't with that guy. And the screw is just so... But the best part? I never even had to go through this struggle to begin with. Because if I had been paying better attention, I would have noticed there are two stops built right into the electronics box that lines everything up where it needs to go. Just awesome. Fortunately, the third screw was far less complicated, as being able to actually see what you're doing is a pretty huge advantage. That a fact. And once that third screw's in place, we can now move the Z-axis into position. To do this, we just need to slide the print bed forward, and then find this little notch on the back of the electronics box. We'll be lining that notch up with the back of the Y-axis assembly. Like so. Once it's aligned, go ahead and tighten down those three screws, and this part of the assembly will be complete. Now we can move on to installing the LCD screen. The LCD screen is really a breeze to mount. You're just going to want to flip the printer on its side so you have a clear view of where the screw needs to go. And then rough in where you think the viewing angle will be best. You can make final adjustments after the printer is upright. Now this next step would seem pretty simple, in that all that's really required is plugging in the cable into the LCD screen and then tucking the cable into the channel. And while the plugging in went fine, so help me if my glue gun were plugged in at the time, that cable would have been doused. This isn't a portable. Though I eventually did get it tucked in, I'm not gonna lie that zip ties were really, really tempting. Step 22 involves taking the Y-axis cables, feeding them underneath the printer, through the electronics box and getting them ready to plug into the actual motherboard itself. I really am a fan of their approach to wire management with this printer. Everything is very tidy and can be tucked away very easily. The Z and the X axis cables are already connected, so all we have to do is plug the Y axis right in between the two. <laughs> Giggity. Come on, PG here, buddy. Sure. Alright, well, that was awkward. So now we're moving on to connecting the Y-axis thermistor and the heater. Both are again very simple steps of putting the right plug into the right jack. And you're telling me to keep it PG? Right plug in the right jack. Hey, you went there. I didn't. And now that we're done, we can move on to the filament sensor. As per the guide, we want to make sure that the tube is actually pushed as far back as it can go into the sensor itself. And once it is, we'll just tighten the screw down. But before we move on, we just want to take a piece of filament and make sure it clears both pieces of the tube. 
Just like that. Wonderful. And the last step before closing up the box is to actually connect the cable for the filament sensor. This is located in the top right hand corner as the guide shows. Now putting this cover back on was a little bit more difficult because of the filament sensor, which basically added just another obstacle to get around. Basically all we're doing here is lining up each cable with its respective cut in the cover, and then screwing it back down. It does take a fair bit of finagling to get everything to set right, and even more to get the screw in place, but it does all fit. And once that screw's locked down, congratulations! We have officially completed the assembly of a Prusa Mini, in a very abridged and ridiculous fashion. And for part three, we'll be going over the basic setup, calibration, and doing a couple test prints, as well as fixing a rare assembly error from the manufacturer, because why wouldn't it be in the kit that was shipped to me? So the last part the actual guide walks you through is just connecting the power supply and removing the clear film off the LCD screen as well as making sure you put one of the steel sheets on the bed. Now before we get into actual calibration, we just want to make sure that we take out any variables that might affect it. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that the bed is clean, and using some IPA will work just fine. And then we want to make sure that the USB key is properly inserted. We then of course just want to make sure that the system boots and goes into the proper loading screens. There's not a great deal to show or explain because the printer pretty much walks you through the process on its own. So as long as you go through the initial steps as they happen, you should be fine. But in my case, after the setup was done and there was a test print on the bed, Something wasn't looking right. My first clue was that my Z height when calibrating was almost twice of what it should have been. And it was right about here when I noticed an issue. As I watched the extruder circle over the part, I noticed that there was next to no clearance between the part and the Minda probe. A tiny plastic booger would have easily made contact. After digging through the Prusa forums, I found that the Minda probe was supposed to have two to three threads above the plastic clamp. I only had one. Fortunately this was a very easy fix, and I've included a link in the description below with the steps involved, but it's pretty easy, and you pretty much just saw them. And after I recalibrated the z-axis, the newest addition to my print farm was up and running. So I want to thank you guys for watching, I know this video was pretty long in comparison to my other videos. But I had a lot of fun making it, and if you enjoyed it, please consider giving a like and subscribe below for more content later on down the road. Thanks guys, later.